how to create rectangles in Photoshop, as well as use the rectangle tool in Photoshop. I'm using 221, same for 220, etc. PC or Mac. First thing to do, go over to the rectangle tool. Find it over in the tools panel. Here's the rectangle tool. Also, if you can't find it there, it might be down here, dot, dot, dot. That's the extra section. So you just check there if you ha haven't got it up here. Also, key thing, if you can't find the tools panel, go to window, application frame, options, and tools. Make certain they're all on. Super useful for that as well, tools especially. Now, let's just go over here to the shape, and I just want to create it. I'm going to go through these. You've got shape, path, and pixels. You've got different options there. So shape is the first one. That's a vector design, very useful, and you can just create it very simple by clicking the document and dragging and releasing. It will generate the design with the current fill. So I've just got here current fill, but I can set that to red, green. Simply go up to this fill up here and change the color. And you can do that at any time before or after, as long as you're using the rectangle tool. That's the key thing. If you're not using the rectangle tool. If you go up here to the move tool, you lose access to it. These are all the options along here. There's no option for the color. That's why properties, super useful key panel throughout all this. So properties, click there and you've got the properties. You can see all the width, height, everything's there. So simply find that and you can find that in window and properties, same sort of as here. So with this, what you can do, go down to the rectangle chain and just simply change the colors. You've also got gradient and patterns. You can use those and also turn it to white, green, blue, whatever. I'm gonna go with red. So stroke, you can increase the width or weight, depending on what you want to call it. And just do that, just change that slider and you can see it just gets a lot bigger or a lot smaller. And you can also select it there and just type in 20 instead or 10. You can also change the color, exactly the same as before, patterns, fills, etc. Just run through those, make it gray, white, etc. or black. Generally, I always have it black. Have a change the size as well as go here and you've got stroke options. You've got some presets as well. So presets, you just simply click here and you've got this lovely preset, these dashes here. Very quick and easy to create that. And also some dots around the edge. What you can also do, you've got alignment. So these presets are super useful, great start point, and you can add your own if you want. But you've also got here. Put that inside. So there, all those dots are inside the shape. That's central to it, you see it cuts through and then you've got outside. And also you've got other options here for caps, corners, etc. You want to change, tweak those as well. So that, and it's save stroke or not. However, I'm just going to go back to the default. So there's the default one. Also what you can do, change the width. So again, you can type in 234 and you can see you can just change it. Very well. And the key thing is, again, the rectangle tool has to be selected. And you've got height here, so 300. You can just change that. And you can also do it interactively. So just move. However, interactively, how to do that? Well, key thing is show transform control. Go back to the move tool. So the move tool, show transform. If you turn that off, you see things disappear. So you've just got, and then you can't resize it. So that's, I think, quite a useful feature. Show transform tool. And that might not be on by default. It's not on. Put that on because that's super useful just to resize things, rotate things, etc. So you can rotate it as well as, thing. and you can see an angle there. So just what I'm going to do, again, go back down here to the rectangle tool. Now you'll notice there's no rotation there. Not very useful. However, key thing again, properties. So there's the properties. You can drag that from there. You can just put it anywhere you want, this properties. And what you can do, you can change things here. So 2000, we'll change there. 400, just change. 800, change that. And you can also reset as well. It will just reset it, which may be not so useful. However, you've also can modify the position. So you've got here X and Y. So if you decide, you know what, I want it at the edge. So you put zero, just puts it straight to the edge of this document, or maybe 400, 400 pixels in, you got it 400 pixels now. That's the gap from there to there, 400. 
And also you can do the same with height. So 300, etc. You can also flip it. Obviously, no use whatsoever when it comes to shape such as this. However, also what you can do, you can change the angle. So 120, just change it. And also you can type in. So 23 or 20, just change it that way. And again, zero. Just going to go with the default. Again, you've got appearance, stroke, exactly the same as before. So you can click there and you've got all the options there. Options for the dots and dashes all via here. Also, you've got this roundness feature. You notice this roundness? Well, what you can do, you can change that and these widgets. It's also interactive. So you've got it, it comes nice rounded just by changing these values here. This is what it is, a rounding corner. And you'll notice it doesn't change here. That is one reason why I generally don't use properties because there's some things here that only work after the event. Sometimes some things and some things are poor before the event. So if you if you change it here, so let's just go back. Now, if I change it here, make it 108. Now create it. It's created here. If I go up here and try and change that, it doesn't change it. It only changes it for the next thing you create. So that's the difference. Properties is a live feature and can be changed at any point. So it's simple. Just change it from here. And again, puts it back to that fill, which is not the one I want. I want that one. It does have a mind of its own sometimes. I have to say, it will, if it's decided it's going to be gradient as a color, it will keep putting it back to the gradient as a color. Rather frustrating feature. But again, interactive, you can change this thing. Generally, I don't use them that often. But you can separate. So you can just deselect that. You've got an option there. You notice a little sort of link. Click there. And what you can do, you can just resize that. And it still does it. New. 20. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Hmm, that does seem a bit old. However, it should only do it on the other one. So you can just change it over there. Okay. So if you change it over here, it changes. That's a very odd feature, isn't it? However, that's what it does. Right. Let's just go back to the default gradient. Again, you'll notice now, let's just put it back to red and create another shape. What you can also do, obviously it's not much great. If you, you want more than one rectangle. Of course, you can create more than one rectangle. Just simply create another rectangle. However, say you want the same rectangle. Simply select the Move tool and hold down the Alter Option key. You can find that on the keyboard next to Command, Control, whatever. Depending if you're using the PC, it will be, like I say, Alt key. Just simply select that and you can just create a copy of that design. You can also do it via Layer Menu and you can duplicate layer. That's another option because that's all it is. It's a layer. So if you go to the layers, it's the layers panel again, window and layers. You can see it's just a standard layer and you can modify these. They've got blending modes as well. That's the key, a good thing about this. You can just quickly change and it's alive. So you can go through and say, oh, I want overlay. So you can see you can create some interesting color effects just by doing that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep that like that. If you decide at some point, you don't want that to be a vector design. You can always rasterize it. So you can always go to layer menu and rasterize. You've got shape, layer, say layer. Also, what you can do, you can turn it into a smart object, convert to a smart object. What it means? It means that you can add effects to it. You can add various things and they're all live as well. Super useful. So I'll just remove that now. Create the rectangle again. You see, I can create it any size. Well, I don't want that. What I want to do, rectangle, I want to create it constrained. There's unconstrained at the moment. If I go for square, so I go for square there and I create that as a square. Now, just create it as a square. Now, before, if I had it unconstrained, so select unconstrained, it's any size. However, you can hold the shift down. So hold the shift key down and it will create it as a square. But the, that other feature is super useful, very quick and easy. Go for square. Fixed size, you can set it, say, 400. I'm just going to say maybe 1,000 by 1,000. So you can see it a bit better. 1,000 by 1,000 and click the document. And as you do that, and drag around, you can then release. And you've got your 1,000 by 1,000. And you can repeat it. So go there, drag around and release. Click, drag around and release. That's the key thing. Just have to do it that way. That order, otherwise it will not work. Now. What you can also do, 
you've got an option here for proportional. So you think, well, I want it to be three by one. So three by one means if I go like that, three by one again, I drag this out. You can see as I drag that, you can see the lines there. This is now three by one. So that is the one, that's two and three. So it's three across, one up. And you can change it obviously to anything. So you don't have to have it three to one. You can have one to one, 10 to one, whatever. And also you've got an option here from center. Personally, I don't like that one. Generally it's just, but it's useful if you've got a limited space. So let's just go back to unconstrained. So unconstrained and from center. So you start from that point and then go out. It's okay, but you can, it's quite good if you just want to troll it a particular way. Personally, very rarely ever I do that because normally what I do, I normally resize it this way and just position it. But if that's how you like to use it, fine. It's number of ways, always with Photoshop, there's lots of ways of doing things. So now what next thing to do, go over here to the rectangle tool again. Now the other ones are much, follow much the same thing. They're all got the same sort of features. So I'm not going to obviously go with such great length with that, but path. Again, you've got the same options here, unconstrained. I'm not going to have from center and you get path. So what's a path? Well, it's more useful for numerous other things. Pass are great for, well, let's just show you window and pass. There's a pass feature, work pass, and you can use it like for fills. So fill and it can ply things around a path. You've got flame effects around a path and so on. There's a, there are a lot of vector things that you can do with pass. Personally, I probably use pass very few times, but I'm certain others use pass a lot. If you're creating different designs, Pass may be the way to go forward, but it's they've all the same functionality, exactly the same shape. You got pass. The only difference is pass have got no color and they've got no stroke. So you've just got just the raw vector design. And you've got here pass, you've got some options over here save path, delete path, make a selection. Useful for selection. So if you create this design, you can say make selection just by the right side and it click OK there. It lets you, yep, and you've got a selection from that. So it's a quick way of creating the selection from your rectangle, rectangle tool. And you can do that, repeat it, obviously, and do some other things as well. Actually, another point. So just go back to rectangle, shape. So you've got a shape there. What you can do, hold down the shift key. And then you can create another rectangle or hold down the shift key and drag. And it creates that as well. And so on, so you can see, that's holding the shift key down. But that's also here, we combine shapes, etc. That's a bit beyond what I'm going to go through here because we could talk about that for a while as well. But you can create all kinds of different rectangle designs just by using that feature. However, let's just go now to the final bit, which is move that out of the way because now this is not live. And you will see as soon as you do this, you lose properties are not so useful there. This is all created as you create it. So simply just go over here to rectangle tool again, pixels, and probably more useful this time, probably something like window and color or swatches. I generally use swatches to be honest. Most time I've got a certain color scheme that I use and I will say pastel. So I'm gonna select that and you've got that design. Now, weirdly, and I've never understood why they've never added it, the pixel mode, does not have a stroke. Don't know why you can't have a stroke with it, but anyway, it doesn't. So you've only just got fill. That's all you've got to play with. And also you've got gradients either. So you can't select a gradient. If you've got a gradient, you, you know, I want a gradient. You can fill it with a gradient and that's perfectly reasonable as well, but you just can use solid colors. That's all you get. It's been like that forever. No one's updated it. No one's adding any new features. I would love to see a gradient feature, a nice gradient feel, pattern feel with this as well. But unfortunately, that doesn't exist. So simply rectangle tool, pixels, normal. Now you've got blending modes. Again, I showed blending modes a bit earlier. You can set normal. So normal like that. But what you can do, you can go say, oh, you know what? I want darken. That's a blending mode. And go across with the same color. Obviously not with much use. But say, let's just go for another color and you'll see different effects. Darken's not going to be very, well, 
doesn't help. Yeah, there you are. Darken. Does help to have a slightly darker colour than that. Right, so darken. You can also do lighten as well, or multiply. So you can see what happens. It just generally, you can create the rectangle and it will be on top of that. And you can do it, of course, inside, and you will see. So you don't get the colour you think you're going to get. You just get a different colour because of that blending mode. Which sometimes can be a bit confusing unless you go through all the things. And I know even now, I use them for years, I still think, hmm. So that's the end result. And you can do other ones and you can see the results of that. And you can create some interesting, colourful designs by using blending mode. So you shouldn't ignore them. But I have to say that sometimes just a little bit of experimentation, always with blend modes. And also sometimes just apply them a couple of times. You can create some very interesting combinations. And also, of course, you can always go to a different one, exclusion, say, and apply that. And you can see the result of that. You can create multiple designs simply by doing that. Now, that wasn't what I want to show, but I thought better show blending modes. Also opacity. So you can set here opacity for your rectangle. So again, 27 there, it just makes it a lot fainter. So if I apply it again on top, you can see then, so it just goes closer and closer to 100%. Most time, but it gives a nice little blurry effect. Now, also, of course, when you apply it like this, you can always apply filters as well. So filter menu and say blur. Gaussian blur. Simply apply Gaussian blur and you've got a nice blurry. Instead of a sharp rectangle tool, you've got a nice blurry rectangle. Which is perfectly reasonable as well. You've got anti-aliasing as well, you can turn that off. Personally, I think if you zoom in, you probably it might not look as good. So personally, you always keep that on. And again, you've got exactly the same options here. So if you want to, square, you set that and you go to red, and it will only be just red. And again, you've still got opacity there, set to 27, put that up to there and apply it there. And you can see, you just get squares, which is fine. Also again, fix size. So click on the document and release. Yellow, click on the document and release. You can just create very quickly using this, using this gear. I always got a gear. I'm not certain if it's got a name, options, whatever, path options. Maybe it's your pixel options. However, also you've got proportional, do exactly the same, three to one, four to one, also from center. All those sort of options, all there. But generally, I stick it still with unconstrained and go with that. And you can quickly create your designs very quick and easy across there. And of course, you can combine your rectangle tool with other shapes, but that's probably a fair run through of a lot of the functionality of rectangle. Of course, as with anything, there's 3D options, there's various filters, combine it with other shapes, apply it with filters, you can also combine it with type, all those kinds of things. Lots more things. The rectangle tool should not be completely ignored as a tool. It is one of the, one of most, it's a square, one of the most fundamental building blocks. So it definitely not to be ignored. So rectangle, like that, create all kinds of lovely designs, very quick and easy. Nice colourful design, Make nice multiple shapes like that, great. Does. Anyway, hope you found this tutorial of interest, always any new tutorials all the time, a dislike or like, always appreciated. Thank you much, any comments, always great as well. Anything that I didn't explain, maybe if you put some comments to say, you didn't explain this, please put that, that's always great because sometimes you think, hmm, I wonder what I forgot.